know, when we opened up the rep here, it was kind of an ongoing joke that we left the flooring that was here that was a purple floor. And it was kind of a joke, like, hey, we've got a purple floor zoo, right? Well, over the last couple months, the flooring has just kind of dissipated and kind of broken up and what they call failed, basically chipping up and stuff like that. But it's a little bit tricky to redo the floor because we have the animals. They've got to come in and grind. It's going to make dust, number one. And then, of course, when they put the epoxy down, we have to make sure that we could find an epoxy that didn't have the chemical smell that would affect the snakes, right? And reptiles. So basically, we figured all that out. Today, they're showing up and we're going to visqueen off all the enclosures. That way, none of the dust gets into the enclosures. We're going to have fans on the door so that the blowing outside. We're going to grind this floor down and then we're going to epoxy it so it'll match next door. So goodbye, purple floor. Normal American fun of us from purple floors. It's going to look pretty amazing. Definitely a little stressful because I you know, always worry about the animals, but we're going to do the best we could do. And I'm sure that everything's going to be fine. The guys are showing up any minute. We're going to get rid of this purple floor. Reptile Army, welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. It's been a while since I told you guys to go to reptilearmy.com. We actually have two drops about to drop any day now. One's a fall drop and one is a Halloween drop. So you guys don't want to miss those. So go ahead to reptilearmy.com, become a soldier, join the movement. You guys are going to love these next designs. As you can see, things are happening pretty quick. We got the bisque queen up so that the enclosures on this side are going to be all good. They're putting it up on the other side right now, scraping off as much of the material as they possibly can. Then they're going to grind the rest of it. So uh, this place is going to look so cool. I, you know, listen, the purple floor served its purpose, but it is time to go. I'm excited my buddy Ryan from R&B Reptiles actually sent me a little bit of a gift here. I am excited to show you what that is. And again, I cannot thank the guys from R&B, Ryan, uh, right here. I'll put his link in the description. Go show him some love. Got a YouTube channel. Just a really cool guy with a bunch of really cool animals. And I was excited to get this little monkey here because we actually had one a long time ago at the Reptarium, but it was a wild caught one and it passed away, unfortunately. And it happens to be... Let me take a look here. Oh my gosh, where is it at? Oh, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? I have no idea if this one's docile or not, but it's an African emperor scorpion. But this is a captive born one. I'm gonna to try to get it on my hand without it biting me or stinging me, I should say. And this is a little, whoo, this is a little captive bred one, right? And what's really nice about the captive bred ones is obviously they're gonna live a lot longer, right? Because they're from captivity. And this is just only not even a year old. It's absolutely incredible, unbelievably cute animal. And it was always a great educational animal to have here because you can put a black light on it and it'll glow really amazing. So this is gonna be a great educational animal. Thank you so much for Ryan for sending this to us. It's a little tiny, it's so darn cute. These guys will get like four inches long. I cannot believe how cute it is at this size and so far it seems like it's very docile now the one thing about the african emperor scorpions is that they're pretty tame compared to say the asian forest scorpions that typically do like to sting a lot so that's what we want to do with an education animal we don't want to get people stung right so now that we have one that's this size we can really habituate and handle it and it's going to be an incredible animal here at the reptarium i am so happy about this thank you ryan this was awesome The floor is all grinded down now. You can kind of see it already looks so much brighter in here. And again, it's gonna actually have the same feel as the other side. They'll kind of be seamlessly. So uh, definitely uh, looking different. No more purple floor, that's for sure. So uh, now the next step is actually just kind of cleaning up and then they'll actually put the first clear coat of epoxy down. Now this epoxy again has a very, very small smell. We uh, made sure we went with one with the less amount of chemicals in it. So there's not a smell that's gonna hurt the animals. And then they actually come back and do another coat with a little bit of grit in it in it so that you don't slip and fall so uh, it's coming together Remember 
the other day when I cut that clutch of eggs and I wasn't even sure what the one snake was. I thought it might be an ivory. Not gonna lie, I wouldn't mind getting one more bamboo just because I think it would be kind of cool to tell that story of like, yep, we got another bamboo in this clutch too. Whoa, what the heck we got here? We got an ivory ball python here. Got an all white snake. I think it's an ivory. It looks like an ivory. Hmm. That's really interesting because what that tells me is, no, I don't understand. Because the female would have to be yellow, but she's a specter because she's producing super strength. I don't know what that is. It may not be an ivory. It might be some sort of super stripe that's just really blown out in pattern. That's weird. Until this one hatches, I can't tell for sure if it's an ivory, but wow, that one I did not expect at all. So only a couple snakes have hatched out in this clutch so far, which by the way, this is absolutely a ripper here. This is actually a firefly super stripe. So it's a pastel, it's a fire, and it's a super stripe. Absolutely incredible. And a lot of other really amazing snakes hatching, but this one did come out. Remember, I was like, wait a second, how could it be an ivory, right? The female would have to be a yellow belly, which we know she isn't because she's a specter. And if she was a specter and a yellow belly, it'd be a super stripe. Basically, I didn't know what was going on. It was just like patterly white as snake. Well, it hatched out definitely not an ivory ball python. There's no doubt about that because ivories look completely different to this. This is a, is a mystery, guys. I mean, basically, I'm trying to think of the genetics here. This was definitely a pastel, a fire, a pinstripe, and a yellow belly. And it was bred to a pinstripe specter. So let's say it has all of those genes in it, right? It has pastel, it has fire, it has pinstripe, it has yellow belly, it has specter. That should not be a patternless snake whatsoever. Now we've been hatching some interesting kind of weird animals that we've been calling a mystery ball pythons and stuff like that. Even my friend Miguel over at Always Evolving Pythons just hatched out some snakes that came from a female that came from us, which was actually a ghost honey cypress, and it was really bizarre. He said, wow, there's definitely another gene in this. This is crazy. So the point is, is that I think this is another animal that popped out of a pinstripe, right? It was a pinstripe specter female. So I think a lot of my pinstripe have some kind of hidden gene some another gene in it that's causing like the pattern to go wacky. Like I said, no way in any world would a patternless snake come out of this unless it was an ivory. And again, the only way it could be an ivory is if it was a yellow belly to yellow belly, which it can't be because the female was a specter. So basically we have another mystery snake that hatched out this year that we have no idea what's going on with it. Absolutely wonderful looking snake, really excited about it, but I love hatching stuff out that's crazy. And they're all kind of displaying very similar traits. So, hey guys, we've got to find out what mystery is going on in here. Try to isolate the gene and then we can actually work it and see what it's doing because I'm absolutely excited about it. Baby colubrids hatching as always, again, getting down to it. But wow, look at this scaleless corn snake right here. This is just a normal scaleless corn snake. But the thing that's cool about scaleless corns is how polymorphic they are. Everyone is completely different. Some have a little bit of scale, some are completely scaleless, some patterns are wacky. This is definitely a wacky pattern scaleless corn snake. Then we had just a little Andre or black corn snake and a normal. These are also het for scaleless corn snakes. Let's see what we have in this next box here. Oh my gosh, again, I had mentioned before how we were having some amazing amazingly beautiful Pueblins this year. Probably the best Pueblin production we've ever had. And that's just because we raised up some really beautiful Pueblins a couple years ago, and now they're finally breeding. And then you might ask what these other big eggs are. These are actually Honduran milk snake eggs. So albino, tangerine, Hondurans haven't quite hatched yet. So those guys will hatch probably a little bit later. For whatever reason, Hondurans usually take four or five days longer to hatch than other colubrids. So uh, they'll be hatching any time. And again, we don't have many clutches left. So be excited to see them. Another, oh my God. Another absolute ripper clutch of Pueblins. My goodness, these things are incredible. I mean, take a look at this one right here. Holy moly. I'm telling you what, like I said, this is definitely the best Pueblin production we've had in a long time. And then we have something here. You can see the pattern on this one. It's called an Aztec corn snake. And it's just a, a, a pattern mutation that is inherent that you can breed through. Just kind of instead of saddles, you have kind of a squirrely pattern to it. Really absolutely beautiful. But wow, I can't believe the Pueblins were hatching this year. I mean, they are absolutely ridiculous. 
ridiculous. And then finally, we have just a whole clutch of Brooks King Snakes. These guys are absolutely incredible. Again, great animals from South Florida. King Snakes that get like six, seven foot voracious feeders, but also very tame and great pets too. So a whole bunch of little Brooks King Snakes. I tell you what, I am loving hatching all these baby snakes. I'm gonna miss it so much. Only have a few clutches to go. Hey guys, what's going on? That's right, we actually have the new floor all done now. It's absolutely incredible. It's amazing how much a floor can change the overall thing, right? It's stunk because again, the reason I didn't want to do the floor before was that I was worried about the chemical smell. I was worried about this dust and all this stuff. These guys were really good and they assured me that there was no chemical smell and they were right. I mean, you couldn't even smell anything when the thing went down. So I should have done this a long time ago and now the purple floor is gone. And like I said, just look at how cool it looks. Everything looks brighter in here it's just kind of a different feel you know the floor matches the enclosures and uh, it's just absolutely incredible and what's even better is that now this floor matches that floor over there of course we got to mop that floor because there's a little dust on it but the point is is that now the place looks like one place instead of two places so I am so excited and I'll be honest even I'm surprised at how different the place looks just with something like the floor so goodbye purple floor uh, as much as you were awesome and you're definitely nostalgic the truth is uh, I'm glad to have this floor done but uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think now I'm just super excited to be open to the public so we can show off the place just because of the floor right but it's amazing how something just like that can brighten everything up and make things even that much more awesome so the bird eater tarantula is actually um, a male and uh, as you guys know male tarantula actually don't really have very long lifespans that being said although he is very very cool we are on the look for some more tarantulas to fill the wall again and come here buddy and this dude as cool as he is I've actually decided I was gonna bring some from my own collection and actually get a chance to let you guys see them when you guys are here on the weekends as cool as this guy is man I really really wish we could have him for another 15 20 years but uh, yeah usually once they get to this age it's pretty much just a matter of time and uh, then they pass away. But you know, that's, 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 that's his life, right? What I'm trying to do is do like what we call a pinch flip. So that way I'm holding his legs together, but I'm not I'm not pinching him whole. It's kind of like if you were to hold an eggshell and not crush it. So, so I use that sort of gentle pressure, but enough pressure to hold onto him. But I did that so I could actually kind of show you guys. See the little the little feet right here? This is what we call pedipalps. They almost look like boxing gloves. Now, if you actually compare them to the other feet right here, that's a big, huge indication that that's likely a male. The other part is actually what we call tibial hooks. As you can kind of see how he's holding them out like that. So that this is actually one of the reasons that we actually don't consider tarantulas true spiders. They have an extra two, two set of legs, or I like to call them arms, but they're, uh, that's the pedipalps. That's pretty cool. And again, I'm just absolutely loving it over here. I hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope you don't mind that I showed you uh, doing a floor, but hey, it's a big part of what we do here, and it's absolutely awesome. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Here's a playlist of us building the Reptarium. You can also do me another favor right over here. Hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.